Today, we are traveling via underground maglev train to the picturesque Argentinian town of San Carlos de Bariloche, or Bariloche for short. We are part of a group of journalists tasked with the soft disclosure of previously classified information on high-speed, hypersonic trains that have operated beneath the earth for many decades. So buckle up and let's go one mile down into the earth. Our journey of over 5,000 miles will take only a short time as we will be traveling at Mach 2. We arrive at Barilake station and clear security and ascend via high-speed elevator to the surface. One is immediately stricken by the similarity of the small town of Bariloche to any number of Alpine village in Bavaria or Austria. Bariloche has a history of German immigration and it's been suggested that some Nazis found a welcoming community there. There are reports of German-style architecture, German-speaking residents and even rumours of secret Nazi enclaves. It is believed that the remote location of Bariloche provided a safe haven for former Nazis, allowing them to live undetected. After the end of World War II, rumors began to circulate about the presence of Nazis in Argentina. Some speculated that high-ranking Nazi officials, including Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun, had escaped to South America. While the official account states that they died in Berlin in 1945, some believe that they managed to escape and start a new life in Argentina. One theory suggested that Hitler may have traveled to Argentina via U-boat, taking advantage of the country's large German immigrant population. Supporters of this theory point to alleged sightings of Hitler and Brown in Argentina during the post-war years. There are stories of individuals claiming to have encountered them, as well as reports of clandestine operations facilitating their escape. Another venue that was often mentioned in connection with the Nazi presence in Argentina was the Analco Ranch. Located in the province of Buenos Aires, this estate was said to have been owned by a German family with ties to the Nazi regime. The case of Adolf Eichmann, a high-ranking Nazi official involved in organizing the logistics of the Holocaust, does add a layer of credibility to the idea of Nazi escape to Argentina. Eichmann was captured by Israeli agents in Buenos Aires in 1960 and brought to trial in Israel, where he was convicted and executed. His presence in Argentina for many years before his capture raises questions about who else might have found refuge in the country. While some Nazis did indeed relocate to Argentina after the war, many were technically not war criminals, but those seeking refuge due to fear of prosecution. The Argentine government's historical sympathy toward Nazis, coupled with lax immigration controls, may have facilitated the entry of individuals associated with the regime. Our visit to Bariloche did not unlock any secret Nazi enclaves or evidence of Hitler's hiding place. We did find a remarkably Germanic town high in the Andes with many German-speaking residents and an eerily feeling of being in Bavaria. After consulting a map of South America, I noticed that the tip of Argentina is only a short distance to Antarctica. I decided to investigate whether the Maglev train network extended to the South Pole. That will be the topic of a future video.